Casual here. In this video, I'm going to show three great Devastator builds and which pack skills you should pick up to make them even better in Wild Slayer. With each of these, I'll take you through what makes the builds work, a build summary, and then a look at the pack skill trees. Let's start with a bang with one of the strongest builds of any class in the game currently, the Seismic Commander Anomaly build. We all know how good the Seismic Commander gear set is, with its damage bonus to enemies afflicted with bleed, which is applied through Earthquake and buffed to 90% by Tainted Blood and Bloody Boost. Earthquake can be used twice through the mod second Quake, and can hit at long distances due to Earth's legacy, making it easy to apply bleed to every enemy in sight. The damage that Earthquake does is increased by Earth's heritage, while the damage of bleed is buffed by Bloodbath. But the biggest boost your overall damage comes from the mod Despair, which can be found on the Marshal's foot gear. You do big damage by applying bleed with Earthquake, using Gravity Leap and then popping your Moaning Winds Radiation Splash new. I've hit for nearly 5 million of damage using this technique, which puts a nice dent into even the toughest enemies. The way to think about the Earthquake and Gravity Leap skills in this build is that they are set up for your damage, rather than the damage themselves. Prior to New Horizon and the introduction of a global cooldown, this meta build was running multiple moaning winds, allowing you to unload a ton of damage by cycling through your weapons. Now this is not possible, I am using scrap grenade and opening shot on the juggler. Fire one shot for a base half a million damage, which scales up with your damage and anomaly buffs, and then reload. Because the reload speed of the juggler is 1.5 seconds, you will be ready to go again immediately the animation is finished. For my final three mods, I'm running Power Simulation, Captain Hunter, and Human Comet. Power Simulation works incredibly well for the new content due to the number of elite enemies, which also benefits Captain Hunter. Because your big damage is coming from the mods on your weapons, it is better to mod Captain Hunter than, say, Ground Crush. An additional 25% damage to elites adds around a million damage to your Moaning Winds Radiation Splash Nuke, which far outweighs the additional damage you would get from Earthquake. Saying that, I would like to swap out out Human Comet for Grand Crush or even Extra Quake as Earthquake typically hits more enemies and would also benefit from the Earth's Heritage buff. It is not a big issue on the build, but would be the optimal setup. The ideal stats for this build is Anomaly Power, Cooldown Reduction, and one from Stasis Power, which busts bleed damage or Skill Life Leech. Not that you really need much additional healing, as the bottom branch of the Devastator's class tree includes massive survivability through Protected by the Anomaly, Skill Sentry, and Blood Donation on top of the Devastator's high armor and health. Without any other survivability mods or buffs, your base physical damage reduction is at 75%, and Skill Sentry takes this to the cap. Once you have applied bleed to multiple enemies, the healing over time you are getting means you have to try really hard to die. Buffs your anomaly power picks up through the usual 10% class nodes, and also Paladin which is activated by Reflect Bullets. This skill not only provides you with 100% damage mitigation against projectiles, to activate the Paladin buff and its cooldown is reduced by up to 90%, meaning it is always ready to go. All of the cooldowns that you need for your skills, Endless Tremors, Unending Watch and Perpetual Motion are easy to pick up as you go through the class tree. Likewise buffs to your resistance piercing are also easily picked up, and I think are essential given that all of your damage is anomaly damage. These also make Unstoppable Force a viable option in your build. Finally pick up Executioner, which is a great way to finish off any enemy. The new pack skill trees look set to provide some incredible buffs to this build. Impact Point adds additional damage to your Earthquake and the Gravity Leap. Puncher frees up a mod slot by removing the need for Blood Shock, which I would use for Unstoppable Force, to bump up your damage even more. Earth and Shell adds some great survivability, while Richter Rising buffs the damage from the Earthquake Gravity Leap combo. Energy Transmission will work perfectly with this build and the rotation of Earthquake into Gravity Leap will see your damage going up while your cooldowns go down. A much maligned build for Devastators has been the Firepower build, albeit the one I've created buffs its firepower to over 700,000 and has some of the best firepower AoE in the game. The Devastator does lack a rounds based skill, but with the new pack skill trees, I can finally see these holding their own with the best builds. The Devastator is the only class that can increase its health regeneration through its class tree and all 
also through mods, and then leverage this through the cycle and vim and vigor to buff its weapon damage by over 90%. It also has the highest weapon damage buff through statue gear set, with its 100% buff when Golem or Tremor is active. And with Golem of Death and Perseverance, that will be as long as there are enemies to kill. With this build, my base firepower is buffed to 295,000 through weapon damage, close range damage, assault adept, and assault master nodes in my class tree. When I activate Tremor, this is buffed to nearly 600,000 and to more than 700,000 when enemies are closed through stair into the barrel. With so much additional health regeneration, this is the perfect build to use Fatal Symbiont and Dark Sacrifice as you get all of the benefits of the additional weapon damage, while the negative, the health drain, is neutralized. This gun also synergizes well with a close range damage build, which this absolutely is with 105% close range weapon damage buff, 25% of which comes from personal space. Ideally it would be great to stack close range damage on every piece of your armor, but with the statue gear set that is not possible. I am running the head, gloves and feet of the set, the last two coming with close range damage and cooldown reduction, which are the two stats you should be focusing on after bonus firepower. Skill life leech on the head is not awful, but not really needed given all of the health regeneration you already have. One challenge with Fatal Symbiont is that it runs out of ammo very quickly. To counteract this, I'm using Bleeding Impulse to apply bleed when Golem is active, which is nearly all of the time, and Vampiric Mag, which is the best ammo replenishment mod in the game. This also allows me to buff damage to enemies with bleed through Tainted Blood and Bloody Boost. You could run Captain Hunter and sell a Bloody Boost for this build, but I found that with the way damage is applied and with the no bounty Hunter, this really wasn't needed. The second mod on Fatal Symbion is Ultimate Damage Link, a mod that only rises to its full potential with the Devastator in a build like this. What you will find is that the damage shared with other enemies by this mod is higher than the damage that you are doing to the enemy that you are shooting. Potentially this is due to double dipping on debuffs being applied to the original shot and again for the new enemy when the damage is shared. When you are fighting elites, the best strategy is to train enemies to them so that your stare into the barrel buff is maximized and then shoot all of the enemies other than the elites. Pop your Moaning Wind Radiation Splash Nuke and you'll find that elites are melted by this strategy, even broodmothers with their excessive armor and resistance. I also use Endless Mass on elites to pull enemies to them, as well as applying bleed if it is not already up. This also provides more survivability as into the fray buffs my damage mitigation by 15%. This gives me 95% damage mitigation from elites through Golem, into the fray and Bounty Hunter, making it easy to face tank anything. Tremor also buffs your armor and health regeneration through Human Fortress. I typically use Tremor and Endless Mass once Golem goes on to cooldown, with high health of 39,000, physical damage reduction of 73% when Tremor is active, and health regenerating at 2,500 per second. Staying alive is rarely an issue. If you mainly play multiplayer, there are a couple of other mods you should think about using from the statue gear set. Power of Stones buffs your team's weapon damage by 40% for 8 seconds when you trigger Tremor, while Golem Squad increases the duration of Golem and shares Golem with them for 25% of his normal duration. Given that Golem should be up for almost the entire fight, I don't think that the latter is the most optimal. However, Power Stones provides great burst damage for boss fights when used at the right time and when running with other firepower builds. The pack skill trees have a number of nodes in them that directly address some of the issues the Devastator has due to the lack of a round skill. Hunting Season adds 15% weapon damage and increases your magazine size by 50%, solving the problem of Fatal Symbion's small magazine. With your next choice, you could go with either Harvester to increase your weapon leech or Harden to buff your damage mitigation. Both are good choices. Finishing Touch is an excellent damage buff and comes with ammo replenishment, which could free up a mod slot for a damage mod like Bloodlust, or Sharp Eye, or Power of the Stones, as you may not need Vampiric Mag anymore. Armor Division buffs your armor piercing. One of the biggest things that rounds based builds give you is that your shots completely bypass armor, and that is something that Devastators sorely miss. So getting buffs to armor piercing through your skill tree is excellent, and the reduction in the cooldown of Endless Mass is pretty nice as well 
while and might make modding Mosh Pit or Shattered Armor a good idea. The final node I'll picking up is against devastating odds, which buffs your armor piercing by another 30% or makes all of your shots critical for 4 seconds, both of which are great damage buffs. Picking up Strange Surgeon is also a possible choice as it removes the need to mod Bleeding Impulse, freeing up another mod for a damage dealing one. So far we have looked at a fire power and an anomaly power build. One of the hopes of the Outriders community is that in World Slayer we will finally have content that isn't all about speed and DPS. We want tanks to be not only viable, but also optimal for the hardest content. So let's look at my Devastator tank build. I've built this tank build with an eye to what I think will be the best pack skill tree option for tanks. Overwhelming Force. Tanks need to be able to soak up damage so we'll want to max out armor as well as using a protection skill. So this no ticks all the boxes. Core of the build focuses on generating armor. In the class tree I'm picking up some key nodes for this. The well named tank, heirloom armor and through the mob which synergize well with a tank and spank approach. Protected by the anomaly which goes with the anomaly buffs I'm picking up in the skill tree and skilled sentry which stacks every time I activate a skill but decays after 10 seconds. I'm also modding damage absorber to buff my base armor as well as picking up buffs to max health and stacking max health on 3 out of 5 armor pieces. All of which gets me to a base max health of nearly 49,000 an armor of 247,000 which is close to the off cap of 85% physical damage resistance. In order to ramp this up and maximize the effect of overwhelming force, I'm using armor boost and panzer drain, coupled with second quake so I can hit enemies twice with earthquake. An example I'm showing now, which to be fair is a little extreme, popping an earthquake twice into a pack of Perfora buffs my armor to 2.3 million, which will generate a very nice seismic impulse of 460,000 every two seconds. And that is why I think this pack skill will be really good for tanks. While being near a morsel as you are with this build, you do need to be able to put out some damage. Because you're not stacking firepower or anomaly power within the build, the only way to do this effectively is by debuffing the enemies. And with this build I'm doing this by applying bleed through Earthquake's Bloodshot, coupled with the Seismic Commander's gear set bonus, Tainted Blood and Earth's Legacy so I can hit enemies across the map. Any bleed damage that I do also heals me through blood donation a great source of healing over time. I'm also modding Captain Hunter to debuff enemies, Claws to add multiplicative effect to vulnerable, and finally Despair for when I use Gravity Leap. This last mod doubles the anomaly damage of my weapon mods, and in particular the Moaning Winds Radiation Splash nuke I'm running on Guillotine. For my primary weapons I'm using Damascus Offering, modded with Claymore Torrent and Fortress, which further buffs my armor, resistance, and damage output. The final skill I'm using is Golem, which is needed to trigger overwhelming force. With World Slayer, I will be making some changes to the build to align with the new pack skill tree, so let's look at that now. Hunting Season provides a nice buff to your damage output and increases the mag on Damascus Offering to 150 rounds. While Harvester is a good source of additional healing, I am leaning towards Hardened, with up to 15% damage mitigation on top of the 85% physical damage resistance and 90% resistance I will have after popping Earthquake and Gravity Leap, I will be pretty much immune to all damage when going face to face with enemies. Finishing Touch adds some more weapon damage, albeit I don't expect to take advantage of the ammo replenishment much, as most of my damage comes from the weapon mods, not the weapons themselves. Strange Surgeon adds a bleed to my shots, which synergizes incredibly well with this build, while the cooldown reduction on Golem will be very useful indeed. We've already seen how good a overwhelming force can be. In order for it to trickle though, it does need Golem to be up and so to help with this I will be swapping out Earth's Legacy as we can now shoot enemies at long range to apply bleed and potentially claws so that I can mod Golem of death and one of Golem's squad or Perseverance. You could also swap out Blood Shock for Bleeding Impulse so that bleed is constantly being reapplied. That's definitely an option. Currently the pure tank builds are good options for the harder content, but it's definitely a slower option than DPS hybrid tanks. If you want to solo Eye of the Storm though, go for it. Just don't try to speedrun. Now if these Devastator builds don't tickle your fancy, then check out this unique build which is a bloody good time. Until next time, casual out.